So in this video, I'm gonna be talking a little bit about a new glasses case that I've come out with, and this is what I'm talking about. So it's a very simple design, but it contains some elements that are also a little bit from fine leather craft coming into what is essentially a more basic course for the Leathercraft Masterclass. So this is based on a classic design, as you can see, very popular, but it also sometimes leaves a little bit to be desired when it comes to hardware and some of the features as well. So this is a lined sunglasses or spectacles case where you can use these for prescription lenses as well, of course. But this just gives a little bit more than the basic bog standard sunglasses case. Hi, my name is Philip and welcome to the Leathercraft Masterclass. And before we dive into any of the specifics about this case, its design and its features, we're gonna go live on Instagram. And if you're not following live on Instagram where you can ask live questions, of course, follow me at Leathercraft Masterclass. And if you enjoy this video and you feel like I added some value into your craft, don't forget to give me a thumbs up, give me a like below, and that would be much appreciated. So let's go live, take some live questions and then I'm gonna be talking a little bit further in depth about this case. Checking connections, you are now live. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's been a while. I'll tell you what I did is after I produced the course on, on how to make this, I actually sent an email out like I normally do to let everybody know that I've actually released the course that you can now watch. Uh, I did get a few questions uh, fired back relatively quickly asking about this case. Now, I normally get some questions about courses uh, but these ones are a little bit more unique because it's a more simple design for the Leathercraft Masterclass. I've come out with quite a few courses that are advanced, some are intermediate, some are a bit more beginner, usually towards the earlier uh, Leathercraft Masterclass courses. So this one is just a little bit quicker, a little bit simpler, and something that people have been asking for. And it was actually one of the top voted courses when I sent out a questionnaire to everybody. So some of you might remember a questionnaire I sent out asking what kind of courses are you interested in seeing? What would you like explained? What would you like made? And uh, sunglasses case was uh, right up there. So that is uh, one of the main reasons I came out with it. 71 on the live, that's interesting. That's higher than normal. Okay, so I'll go through some of the questions that people have been asking, but before I do, I'll talk a little bit about the leathers uh, that have been used in this project. Um, I do give alternatives. This is actually a one-off piece that I managed to get uh, a tannery in Kent. Now this is uh, basically was produced for the, by the tannery for Alfred Dunhill for some of their cases and folio cases. So it's a really nice piece of aniline dyed uh, vegetable tan leather, English bridal leather in this particular case. Um, but a great alternative, what I mentioned in the courses, is uh, Valpier's Butero leather, or Valpier Butero, if you, <laughs> if you want to say it in Italian. Uh, this is a, just a really great leather to use. It's firm, it has a lot of body to it, it's got a great hand to it. But unfortunately, uh, no matter how much money I pay, I wouldn't be able to get another piece, so no one else is. So Botero is, is probably one of the next best things that I would recommend because it's going to be really difficult to get bridal leather like that now. Now that's for the outside. So that's what gives this its coloring and it's not a uh, surface pigment or anything like that. It's not a paint. Uh, what it is is aniline dye. So it's a stain that goes over it. And the great thing about that is it gives a lot of color, a lot of uh, depth to the color rather, a little bit of color variation. It's not perfectly uniform over the hide. And this is probably my favorite kind of leather overall because you really get to see that warmth, okay? It's a bit like having, you know, a beautiful walnut wood and then painting it a different color and completely covering its character. You wanna stain it or oil it or just leave it alone. And that's what I like about aniline dyes, which is just, a dye, so it's transparent, so you can see through it. Uh, if I take one of the not so nice parts of the hide, as you can see there, you can quite clearly see through to irregularities. Obviously you can cut around those, you don't have to use them. You can use a nicer part, but you really do get that depth and that character, which uh, I really enjoy in the leather. Now on the inside of the case, as you can see, it's black. So it's uh, black and yellow. I love that combination, to be honest. 
looks a little bit like a wasp, I guess, but <laughs> it's pretty cool. And this is what I'm using. So this is a goat skin. I usually wrap it in uh, brown paper because I have it grain side out to prevent creasing. So you want some protection there with a little bit of a tie. Uh, this is a small goat. It's a very, probably more kid skin size. It just happened to come that size from the tannery, but it has a very, very fine grain and a lot of softness to it, which is nice because it's more flexible. It's not gonna crease as much inside the case itself and also protects the lenses of your spectacles inside, whether it's sunglasses or prescription lenses or anything like that. Um, so that is what is going on the inside. So for leather, that's it. Uh, and as you'll notice, there is a wrapped snap over the top. And this is something that I like to do for snaps as standard as they come. I'm not a huge fan of snaps themselves. I don't think they look that great. I think they need a little bit more finishing to bring out the best in them because there's not much that's gonna take up that, that much of a small profile and still be quite useful. There's no real kind of locks that are that thin and that flat or anything like that. So snaps sometimes are the best option for certain products and this is probably where I think one of them is. So I like to embellish them a little bit more, bring, elevate them, bring them up and make them look a little bit nicer. And on the inside, we have some infilling. Okay, so infilling is just filling in the gaps and covering up things that don't necessarily look that great. So uh, on the top here, you can see that it's been infilled with the same leather as the lining. Obviously, you know, there are a few changes that have to be made to it in order, for, in order for it to fit and make sure it works. Because if you don't do it right, you won't be able to close your snap. And also this front has been infilled as well with the same leather that the exterior of the case is made from. And what this does is it just hides some of the parts because obviously there's metal that's folding over and it's splitting and folding over. And when you're using some really nice quality leathers and you've put a lot of time and effort into your stitching and edge finishing and, and everything else looks really great and then you open it and you see this kind of mushroomed uh, metal that's you know attached one part of the snap to another, it doesn't really look that great. So I like to kind of cover these up yet still allow the snap to remain functional and useful. Um, but it just avoids that kind of uh, I'm not going to say an ugly look, it just kind of, it looks unfinished and I think you'll agree. Um, so what else comes with uh, the course, okay? How to make a glasses case is the name of it. There's a downloadable pattern, so there's a PDF pattern and it's in two parts, okay? Because the entire pattern doesn't fin fit on A4 or letter sized paper if you're in the US. So we have parts A and parts B, okay? You might not be able to see that on the Instagram live anyway, okay? Because it's 0 0.5 millimeter edge, so it's very, very thin. So there's the upper part, the bottom part, and then you can glue those with paper glue onto craft card or any kind of pattern card. I prefer craft card, not C-R-A-F-T, it's K-R-A-F-T. So it's a certain type of card that's very, very thick and firm. Um, so you can glue those parts together and you'll end up with this. Now it doesn't really look like a glasses case at this point, does it? Uh, it's kind of an odd shape, maybe like a jellyfish or something, but <laughs> that's essentially what you end up with, parts A and parts B together. And that's what you'll be using to cut out your exterior leather uh, to create the case. Obviously there's a fold line there, so uh, some work has to be done on that. And the second pattern is actually a very, very small piece. And this is the nose piece, okay? So this is where normally the bridge of your nose, there's a gap in your sunglasses, such as these, and on the inside, you can clearly see that small piece there. And that is what centers the glasses inside, stops them rattling around, for example, uh, and also keeps them protected, because when you press your snap, you wanna make sure that you're not pressing down and crushing your sunglasses on the inside. So if you didn't have that nose piece, you'll have the issue of your glasses your glasses rattling around, so they held quite securely. Uh, but at the same time, that nose piece takes the pressure when you need to squeeze the, uh, the snap shut. All right, so I'm gonna take a sip of my cappuccino. Hmm, that was not on purpose. I <laughs> just realized that. 
Okay, so um, some questions via, via email that I got back. And the first question is, is this project good for a beginner? Is this a beginner's project? Now you might be looking at it and thinking, Okay, there's a bit of stitching around the outside, along the inside, there's wrap snaps, uh, there's a lining on there, there's infilling going on. And uh, this is not something I'm familiar with as a beginner, is this gonna be for me? The idea of this project is to be quite versatile. So this, as it sits, is probably kind of a middle of the road uh, when it comes to difficulty. As a beginner, you don't have to do, do the lining. You can take the overall thickness and if you're using vegetable tan leather that has a finished back for example so the flesh side has been finished at the tannery and is nice and smooth you'll be able to tell instantly if you turn your hide over and it's all fluffy or you know it's you could re really easily pick up the fibers with your nails it's generally unfinished it's just been split if it's finished usually a resin coat uh, protects it and it will look very similar to the grain side so that's a finished back um, you could easily make a sunglasses case with a finished back hide, vegetable tan leather, nice and firm. Uh, so you don't need to do the lining. If you don't want to wrap the snaps, if you don't want to infill the snaps, you don't have to. Instead of doing edge paint, you could just burnish the edges. So you can make it as simple as you want. But I would say if you're new to the craft and you're looking at it and thinking, oh, some of those parts are a little bit intimidating, just take it step by step and just follow the direction as I take you through the course because you might be thinking oh uh, that's a little bit advanced and then when you try it you're like oh wow I can actually do that uh, which is the whole idea behind the masterclass is to get you to do things that you didn't think you could do now say for example a, a mildly technical part which is wrapping the snap I use a very simple technique I don't use any tools uh, whatsoever apart from a bone folder really uh, it's very, very simple, but on your first attempt, you might be wrapping it and there's some creases around the outside. Well, it's just a tiny disc of leather that you've used. So what you can do is just peel it off again, trim another one off and try again. And usually your second or third attempt, you'll probably be as just as good as mine. You won't be able to see any creases around the outside. It's smooth. It's undamaged. It's perfect, really as perfect as a piece of leather can be. So. If you're a little bit intimidated by some of the techniques, all I say is just try them. Try them once or twice and just confirm that it's maybe beyond your level before you actually think to yourself, oh, that's too difficult. Because oftentimes you might be surprised in what you can actually do as well. So is this good for beginners? I do believe it is, yes, definitely a great beginner project. Now, if you're more advanced and you wanna elevate this even more, you can use some of the techniques from say the techniques of hand stitching where I talked about edge binding or French binding, uh, turned edges, double turned edges for the lining and the exterior from the, uh, the turned edge passport wallet video course that I produced. You could use some of those techniques to finish the edges instead of using edge paint. So you could make it a little bit more luxurious and a little bit more uh, finer. So it's, it's really up to you. So if you're on a high level as a leather craftsman or a leather crafts person, then you can obviously bring it up to that level. And if you're an absolute beginner, don't worry about wrapping the snaps, don't worry about the linings, just use one piece of vegetable tan leather, some thread, some snaps, you're done. Really, really simple project. And you can quite easily, even if it's your first time, you can quite easily finish this in a day, depending on how far you wanna take it. So it's a really simple project that you can do, and you can do them in various colors for different sunglasses. And coming up to the holiday season, obviously it's great uh, as a gift. So if you want to do uh, Christmas or New Year's presents, it's a great one to do. Uh, can I make this with exotic skin? So that's an interesting question. Um, it's a very basic design, simple design, a very popular design in fact. Um, but obviously if you want to elevate it and you want to make this out of say snake skin, alligator, crocodile, stingray is another good one as well that I've done before, which is a really, really fun project. A little bit more advanced with that one. But if you want to use exotic skins, lizard is another good one as well. I would recommend uh, a reinforcement uh, on the inside. Um, probably something, uh, for example, uh, Salper bonded leather board. Um, really as, as, as firm as you can get, as long as it remains flexible at the same time. So you want that firmness, 
but you don't want it to be too soft at the same time where it just compresses and then you're not offering much protection for your sunglasses. So uh, exotic leathers, 100%, absolutely, it would be uh, beautiful. Uh, I have some alligator that when glued to a lining still shows the indentations on the back. Are you talking about uh, when you glue it onto a lining, you're seeing the essentially the tiles and the lines in between like bricks and mortar? If that's the case, yeah, that's just something that uh, is going to happen if you glue a lining directly onto alligator. Uh, if you're making a bag, for example, then obviously you glue it onto a reinforcement of some, of some kind. There's various ones you can use and the lining will be kept loose. Uh, if you're making a wallet, for example, then you could use salpa or something that's going to resist, that's going to be the dominant uh, layer. So when you glue a thin lining onto alligator skin, the alligator is always going to be the dominant layer which shapes the lining. So a, a direct glue on lining isn't always uh, the best. I wouldn't consider it an ugly look. Uh, by any means. It's not a particularly desirable look, but um, I, I understand your pain. So, next question. Um, would this work with chrome tan leather? Much the same as exotic skins. Now, exotic skins can, can vary in their, in their stiffness and their firmness, uh, which is really what this case requires. But I would say, yes, it is possible, but you're going to have to use a reinforcement. And if you're using thick chrome tanned leather, then in order for the whole assembly to um, not be too thick, your reinforcement's gonna have to be thinner. So I would say it would, it would need a thin layer of chrome tanned leather on the outside, a reinforcement such as salpa, or a very, very firm layer of vegetable tanned leather, and then it's sandwiched in between the lining as well, making sure you stay within the thicknesses, ideally, is what you want. So yes, it can be done with chrome tanned leather, but uh, it's uh, a little bit more tricky, a little bit more technical, and you might have to prototype to, uh, to make it work. And can I use thicker leather? Can I use thicker leather if I want to? So then maybe that question is coming from somebody who doesn't have leather that's thin enough, uh, which this isn't particularly thin, but if you, if you wanna use thicker leather, you, you just have to know that it's going to be more difficult to close the lid, okay? Or the flap rather, it's gonna be stiffer and it's also gonna crease more on the inside and you're not gonna be able to put a lining in because then that, that will again make it thicker. And again, if you go thinner on, uh, on the spectrum, uh, it will fold very nicely and there'll be less creasing, but at the same time, it doesn't really have the structure, okay? So you want something that's really gonna protect your nice sunglasses on the inside. So can I use thicker leather? I would not recommend going outside of the bounds of the recommended thicknesses that come with the course. So, you know, if you're using a heavyweight leather, um, I would not recommend that. And last question, what are the best, if I could read my own writing, what are the best, uh, cuts of the hide to use on this course? Does it have to be the best cut? So that was uh, an, another email question that I got. I, if, whenever you make a project and you're using a really choice cut, say you're using vegetable tan leather or any leather really, um, from a, a, a land animal at least, the, the back section, okay, or the butt, is usually the part that is the most consistent, that has the least variation, thicknesses, thickness is usually more uniform even before it's split, uh, the density of the grain is higher, uh, there's usually less imperfections and variation, and more consistent surface if it's aniline dyed and not just you know painted over the top. You're always gonna have an easier time with good quality leather. You know, you can make the same project with the same patterns, with the same tools and the same technique on a mediocre piece of leather, and then you try the same thing on a really high quality piece of leather, and it's like night and day. I always say to people, always test your leather. Don't just buy what everybody else is buying or what's really popular, or these boutique brands or boutique tanneries that are producing supposedly the greatest stuff. Always test your leather. Make sure that you're happy with the way it stitches, creases, folds, edge finishes, you know, everything, do all your testing on it to make sure it is good quality. But, you know, if you can use a choice cut of the hide, going back to the question, then do so. 
but this piece here was made from the shoulder, which is usually kind of the second best. Now, I like the shoulder for some things because of its character, it has more of the growth rings that you see along the neck of the animal as well, which can look like almost like growth rings of a tree, which I really enjoy. Uh, I think it's quite decorative, especially on an attache case. It gives you that, that tiger stripe effect, which I think is really effective, especially in the lighter colors where it's a little bit more obvious. Um, but if you want to use a high quality, go ahead. At the same time, uh, I wouldn't use uh, any flank any of the hind leg, foreleg, neck, tail sections uh, of the hide, I don't think that would be. Generally, you'll find if when you bend a project together, whether it's the flap on a case, whether it's a wallet, whether it's a sunglasses case, if you use an inconsistent part of the hide, you'll find some parts of it are bending more easily than the others. And that's grain densities inconsistent in those extreme areas around the hide. So that's something to be aware of. Um, avoiding those extremities for that reason. So you'll be folding the top and this side's folding more easily than this side and you're having to pinch this side more to counteract that. And it's generally not a great idea. So when it comes to the lining, however, because the lining is not the dominant layer, the lining is the subordinate essentially, it's following the guidance of the exterior stiffer leather. Um, you can choose a part that is, you know, on the flank or near the legs. As long as it's not too loose on the grain is what you're looking for. Uh, try and choose the most consistent part, but it doesn't have to be the best. So if it's your first time making this and you're worried about cutting into the best parts, especially on the lining, you don't have to worry about that so much. So, you know, even if you've got a blemish, you can put the blemish towards the fold line, which is here between parts A and B. And then when it's folded, especially with the nose piece placed inside, you're really not going to see it. So it doesn't matter too much as long as it's soft uh, and it's, it's not going to come under high wear. It's only holding uh, some sunglasses or your prescription lenses. So that is uh, essentially you don't need the best cut for the lining in this particular case. If you're doing a lining for a bag, however, where you are putting things inside and pulling them out and it's, you know, it's subject to stretching and friction and things like that, then you do want a good quality lining for that. But glue in linings on something that doesn't come under high wear, you can kind of get away with using some more of the extremities. Uh, and in this case, uh, goat skin. Great info and thank you. I hope your travel was lovely. It was lovely. <laughs> uh, why do I like Yoohoo glue? Yoohoo glue, for those of you who don't know, it's a German contact adhesive. It uh, usually comes like this. Uh, I like it because you can really dilute it down with acetone uh, and just put them in here, make a thin leather, thin layer. And, uh, you know, especially on um, things like where you're gluing leather onto metal, if you have thick glue and it's a bit lumpy, for example, sometimes you can see that through the leather, through the thin leather. So it goes on very, very thin and it's very, very easy to get it on a small, uh, small area, especially with one of these little bottles that you can buy on eBay and AliExpress and things like that. Uh, I believe the difference is, I think you, uh, Yoohoo or Uhu is uh, acrylic plastic base. I could be wrong, but it's usually a little bit firmer, a little bit stiffer. So I don't use it on highly flexible parts, um, but it's not like rubber. It's a very, very clear, I believe it's plastic rather than uh, neoprene rubber. And either tomorrow or the next few days, something to be aware of. And if you are on YouTube watching this after the fact, it should be up there now. Uh, I'm gonna be doing another 60 minute project. Okay, so a 60 minute project. And this one coming up is going to be a knife slip. Not similar to a sheath, but it's a knife slip for uh, your kitchen knives at home. So the knife that I'm gonna be using is a little six inch French Sabatier knife and I'll be using some nice vachetta leather to do a 60 minute project from cutting it out, fitting it, stitching it, edge finishing it, ideally, hopefully in 60 minutes. So if you're interested in that, don't forget to look out. I'll start putting stories up to make sure that uh, everyone knows that the project is coming up and I'll tell you exactly what you need to get started. So you can try and join in 
and see if you can keep up or you can uh, at the very least sit back, relax, watch, make notes if you want to and, uh, and you might learn something new. So thank you for watching guys and don't forget if you haven't got the tool buyer's guide and also the leather selection video, don't forget to go on to leathercraftmasterclass.com linked below and there you will find a pop-up, enter your email address and I will send you the guides straight away. So the leather selection video is gonna be teaching you exactly what to look out for when it comes to selecting high quality leather, what you need, the kind of tests that you should do on samples so that you don't even have to buy a hide, you can do all your testing on the samples and that way you can save a lot of money, find the best leathers for your projects and just make life a lot easier in the process. The tool buyer's guide will show you exactly what you need depending on the level of craft that you're at. So if you're a beginner, intermediate, advanced, there's different sections of what you'll probably be needing at that point in your craft. So as your experience grows, you know what kind of things you might be needing at that point, but very importantly, what you don't need so that you can get the best results without having to overspend. And that's the idea behind it. So make sure you go on to leathercraftmasterclass.com, linked below and get your free guides. So thank you very much for joining me. If you liked this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.